I want to show you something for everybody that said I ruined a good car. I just want to show you that. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's got to be at least a quarter inch of Bondo over a rusted panel. What is up? Got so much going on in the shop today. I'm gonna start you off with this. Oh man, look at that. Ultra fresh. Miss. So basically, I've been talking with Everlast, trying to get one of these in the shop. Um, so, long story short, basically partner with them. Gonna be using their stuff exclusively. And uh, I'm really excited to bring these to you guys. So we've got the 325 EXT and a water cooler for it. I don't have it set up yet, it's gonna be a little while, but it's gonna make me a nice Everlast station down here under the welding table. And uh, I will be doing some reviews on these. Um, they've got a pedal out that I'm gonna do a review on. And then I'll do reviews on the water cooler and the welder itself. All right, so the other thing is the Bibster. Obviously, if you've been following the channel, you've been watching me build this thing, or attempting to build this thing. I got a lot to do. I wanna have this thing ready for pits. I'm gonna go as far as to say it will be at pits. This and the goose, the goose will also be there. Um, already making arrangements for all that stuff. I at least wanna have it as a good roller, good clean, this like it you know you know I want it to be I want it to be uh, at least nice enough where you can kind of see where I'm going with it. So make plans, pits, March into March, ponies in the Smokies. If you're anywhere near uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, look up uh, PoniesInTheSmokies.com. I believe check it out. See you guys there. So I have it back up in mock-up mode. So last video I didn't have like the front tires and the turbo and all that stuff out here. I'm kind of mocking it up, still trying to figure this out. Um, I think last video I just did the internals, I got all the transmission tunnel and all that stuff built. Since then, I have made uh, the lower bar for the engine mount and the upper bar for it. You can kind of see how that came together. Actually, you know what, go ahead and roll that footage.
So that's kind of how it went together. Nothing special. Today has a couple things I need to work on. I want to get the engine mounts, try to get those done. And then I've also, I've also kind of uh, went me, made me a template for the uh, pedal cluster, um, the steering shaft and all that kind of stuff. I really need to get those things in there just so I kind of know where everything's going to be before I go any further with any of the front suspension parts. I right, got a new master cylinder. You can see this thing's gonna be right in here just like this. Really tight, really close to them headers. Uh, but I think it's gonna work. It's just running out of real estate on this thing and I gotta make it all fit. But anyway, the idea that I have for the uh, front strut towers on this thing, those bars, originally I had planned those bars to be right up next to the firewall. It's not gonna happen because I don't have enough space between like the master cylinder and the headers. So I'm gonna have to modify that. So anyway, long story short, I need to get that plate cut so I can get this mounted and uh, put the steering shaft in, that sort of thing, uh, before I can work on those. The other thing is somewhere. So I bought some tabs online uh, to do the rear suspension. Obviously, you can see that I'm going to use like a Heim joint. I've got tube inserts for the inch and a half chromoly tube that I'm going to use. So I don't know if I'll get to it in this video, but I'm going to work on the rear suspension as well. Kind of get that stuff tidied up. Man, I got a lot to do. Two months to do it. All right, so here is the template that I made. This is basically gonna be, so the firewall will be out of sheet metal, all, all aluminum, but I need like a steel section where the brake booster is gonna mount, clutch cable goes through here, throttle cable, and then the actual steering shaft is gonna go right through here. So I'm gonna use, uh, I think this is some 16 gauge. I'll probably double it up um, in some areas, try to make it a little bit stronger. This is all I had, it's the biggest sheet that I had, so I gotta make make it work for me. I'll actually probably make this piece separate and then just stitch it together right there.
All right, let me show you where I'm at. So, made the firewall piece. You just watched me do that. Got it put in. And this is basically tacked in. I got tacked in at the bottom, tacked in at the top, and mounted. So that thing is basically sandwiched between the pedal cluster, Ford's pedal cluster, and the master cylinder, the brake master cylinder. Kind of bolts all that stuff together. It's sandwiched in there. And then the front side, the front side of this pedal cluster here is, uh, well, it traditionally bolts to the the chassis of the car and you can see I've moved this thing over um, I don't know probably whatever that is six inches four inches uh, it usually would mount here but because I've chopped the chassis in half or the body in half um, this thing needed to be moved over way more so I kind of just had it temporarily hanging in there but I've since made a bracket for it so what I'll probably do is when this comes out I'll just chop off that whole top section of this bracket and uh, just use the one that I made here. So all that's bolted in. This is tacked in really good. Bolted in. It's uh, mounted to the plate. Everything's sandwiched. So the plate itself is sandwiched between the mass cylinder and that uh, pedal cluster. So all that's good. This is where it's going to be mounted. It is a little bit close to this header. Looking at it, it's not much uh, closer than it would be from factory. But what I may end up doing is making some kind of heat shield or something um, like I've talked about in the past. These things are, you know, because I've shrunk this thing down, it's going to be so tight in there. Some of this kind of stuff I'm just going to have to deal with. I'm going to have to figure it out. So the other thing is there's a, there's a hole here. That's for the clutch cable itself. So the cable would come out, uh, wrap around like this, and then go down here to the transmission. And then right beside it will be the throttle cable itself. So... Got a couple of modifications I got to make to this before I put that cable in there. And I've been posting some of these pictures on Instagram. Had a couple people comment. Uh, one of them was was uh, basically saying, hey, why don't you go with a hydraulic setup? It's like a slave cylinder uh, for the clutch and not run the cable. And so I'm going to actually look into that and see what's involved. Um, if it's going to save me space and make it look a little bit neater, I might do that. That cable out here does look a little bit funky. So I'm going to look into that. Really all this stuff right here had to be done um, before I could start the front suspension. So the idea is as of right now on the front suspension is that there'll be two Heim joints. One out here, one in here. All right, so the one out, the actual tube will come up probably out like this and then up here to uh, house the top of the strut. So it'll be your strut tower. And then the other tube will come off this come at a lower angle, then maybe up and out and tie in and kind of triangulate that. I'll put some uh, bracing in there some way and then the strut tire will be here. And then off the back of it um, will be a, like a hydraulic ram that ties into the cage and that will actually uh, push or pull this whole A-arm piece back. Now up to this point, that was the idea 100%. I was gonna have a coal over strut up front, have it have basically what's going to happen is the strut tower itself would move up and down hydraulically adjusting the ride height of the car. The problem I ran into, you can see I was kind of playing with it the other day because I have a strut and um, spindle here. The problem is, is that when you have this, because it's a 20 inch wheel combo, when you have this thing up this high, the strut, even when this thing's compressed, it's still going to be super high. So kind of looking into a couple options um, may buy or build a drop oh, drop Mustang spindle so they make those it's like a two inch drop spindle They're not cheap thought about making something kind of along the same lines um, using a stock one so I might do that or the other option is just to do away with the coilover strut altogether so I might just take the rod out of it and kind of do a strut style suspension so I'll use you know the stock um, spindle but instead of it being an, an adjustable strut I'll just use like a solid rod so the rod will just attach here and come up and then end and then I'll have like a ball joint up top and there won't be any adjustment in here there won't be no spring there won't be anything it'll just be a you know almost a arm lower uh, 
solid strutted upper and then the actual, it'll still be, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. But if I do that, what I'll do is I'll actually put the shock and the spring back here on the inside of the car, almost like a cantilevered setup. And then the shock and spring itself will be hydraulically adjusted for ride height. Probably losing you. I'll figure it out. Once I do, then I'll show you. I'll kind of, we'll kind of go through it here. A um, couple things on this car. So obviously this thing's not going to be like a performance driven hot rod. It's not going to be like a road course or drag car or whatever. Number one concern on this thing is looks, right? It's got to look the part. It's got to mechanically look right. Nothing can be funky looking. I want it to work properly. So looks are number one. Function is number two. I want it to go down the road. I want it to ride good. I want it to steer good. Um, I want it to function properly. I want the, you know, the ride height to move up and down like I want it to. I want everything to function properly. So looks, function, and then last, um, comfort. I'm not really that worried about comfort. You don't worry about comfort in hot rods. As long as I can sit in it and go, and I can reach the pedals and the steering wheel and all that stuff, then I'm good to go. All right, so I'm gonna leave the front end alone for a little bit. Come back here, we're gonna work on the rear end. So the rear end, I've talked about it before. Basically what's gonna happen is it will have a hydraulic cylinder that comes off this bottom bar up, cantilevered, so it'll be hinged in the middle, cantilevered to a coil over shock setup on the rear. Um, that hinge for the cantilever will come off a rear bar, so be a bar that comes off this, comes up about that far, and goes across. This will also double as the radiator support, so the radiator is gonna go back here in the back, just like this. I've actually got that, so. Since I have the radiator and I have a really good idea of how I want to build this thing, I'm going to go ahead and start bending those bars, try to get those things kind of tacked in, maybe even make some radiator brackets and kind of get it sit in here and uh, try to figure out any issues I might have here in the back.
All right, one more bar to this thing. It's the back bar. Very simple, just uh, two 90 degree bends. I kind of just measured what I needed, measured off the center, however many inches it was, it was halfway, did my bend, tied it in, and it's ready to go. So this thing here is gonna actually, uh, it's actually gonna work, it's gonna actually do several things. So this back bar, obviously I'm gonna have some kickers that come down from up top, and they'll come down and tie into this to kind of uh, really, really kind of give it some structural integrity. And then it's gonna do two things. This is gonna hold the radiator. So I'd mentioned before in this video that it's gonna have a rear mounted radiator. It's gonna sit right in here. There's some room on the outside um, of that radiator. There'll be some brackets that come down and that's where the cantilever will sit for the rear suspension. So um, it'll pivot about right here. This end's gonna come out, tie to a shock and a spring. Uh, this end will go in and tie into a hydraulic cylinder that will actually um, move that cantilever, raise and lower the body. So that's the idea right now. I think that the actual arm will actually come up in the cab uh, when it's raised up and then when you let it down, when you let the car down, that piece will actually fall with the car. So uh, we'll see how that comes together. The back's gonna be a little bit easier than the front, I think. So I'm still working on some ideas for the front. Don't know that I can make it happen exactly the way I want it. So, like I said, have some kickers that come in here. They may come back a little bit and then and then down somehow. And then what I may end up doing too is uh, may have some pieces that come off the back of this thing um, to make something kind of to hang the rear sheet metal off of and to have somewhat of a bumper. I got to run tail lights, all that sort of thing back here too. So it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt to have some bars back there. May do them in like one inch or an uh, inch and a half. Um, the only thing I got left inch and five eighths will be these kickers here, and then the down and a pillar bars, and then obviously the one around the front. And then all of the inch and five eighths should be done. Then I'll go into the inch and a half stuff. Probably a lot of the inch and a half stuff will be done once the body comes off. Not really worried about getting it in there right now. But she's starting to come together. The way I'm thinking that the body line's gonna go is it'll kind of come back to the tire. And then it's gonna roll up like this and then in. So that's kind of the idea right now. Um, this this will kind of use as a as an anchoring point too for some of the body panels. Probably gonna have a small rear window in it. These uh, old quarter window holes will be vents. So these will actually, somehow I'll do some sheet metal that comes in and uh, lets air come in through here, through the radiator. Not really sure yet if you'll be able to see the radiator from the cab or not. May block it off totally as far as like sheet metal up this way and then into those vents. I feel like blocking it off will kind of do two things. It'll kind of uh, keep the driver a little safer if something were to happen hose blow off or you know anything with hot hot uh, antifreeze in it keep it away from the driver um, I don't think I'm gonna need any ventilation coming from the cab I think I can get everything I need from the sides so and then the way that this thing's gonna be designed is it should have like a big rear diffuser that will basically create a negative void and so it'll want to pull air through it automatically but then I also have fans. Uh, the radiator came with two fans. Let's see here. So that bad boy kind of fit in there just like that. Like I said, the, the arms should be able to swing up and down in here like this. I'll probably just uh, cut this neck off and just put a like a 45 degree bend in it and have the top up here so I can fill it back here. You want this top part of the radiator to be higher than everything else in the system um, in an effort to bleed air. And then what I may do too is uh, up front, at the front of the engine, I'll probably put a bleeder up there as well to try to let some of that air out that I can, once I've got all the air out, I can kind of lock it down and, and uh, not have to worry about it you know, leaking. And then a lot of the tubing that's going to be in this thing will be aluminum. So obviously there'll be some 
uh, rubber style tubing in the back and in the front, but uh, probably going to use aluminum tube down the sides, kind of anchor all that stuff in. And so it'll just be rubber tube off the radiator until I tie into that. And then sending up front, kind of tuck it all away where it's not seen or hidden. At least that's the idea. Something about the fact that I'm using a lot of factory um, Fox Body Mustang stuff is appealing to me. I just think it's cool that you can make something totally different than what it was intended to be with a lot of the same parts. So like the rear end, a lot of the front stuff. That's why I wanted to do the front struts. I don't know if I can make it happen, but that's where I really wanted to do that. The spindles, the um, pedal cluster, the steering column, the brake stuff, the radiator. That radiator is out of a Fox Body Mustang. So it's kind of, and plus the other thing is too, and I told somebody this on, on social media, they're like, why don't you do this or why don't you do that? The main reason is if I'm out somewhere, something happens and I need a part, Guess what? I just go get a part for a Fox Body. I need a radiator. I can go buy a radiator for a Fox Body Mustang. It's not a custom radiator. Like a hundred bucks, hundred and something dollars, I can get a nice aluminum one versus if I had a custom one made for this thing and something happened to it, then I'd have to have another custom one made, right? Uh, the T5, the, I mean everything. I just go get a part for a, for a Fox Body Mustang 89 or 90 or whatever, you know, and it'll fit. Bolt it on, rock and roll. They're a dime a dozen. They're not very expensive. Um, as wild as this thing is, because of that fact, it's gonna be kind of a budget build. All right guys, there you go. Another episode of the Bibster. I hope you like that. A lot more talking in this one. Uh, a lot of times I'm doing just doing the fabrication, putting music to it. I figured I'd kind of give you a lot more explanation of what's in the mind of me. And uh, what I plan to do, you can kind of get a vision for it. Um, you know, I have a lot of people, I think, that look at this, and they see this old body with rust and Bondo and this old paint, and they think that it's going to be rat rod-ish. But it's not. This thing, front to back, will be almost brand new, other than the body. Um, you know, new brakes, new tubing. The whole engine will be gone through aluminum cylinder heads, probably going to girdle it, may even stroke it, I don't know. Gonna do blow through or fuel injected. Either way, all new components, new fuel system, uh, the whole front front wheels and tires, rear wheels and tires, all the brake stuff's gonna be new. I'm gonna strip the body down to bare metal. Um, it'll be cleaned up and then cleared, so it won't have this look to it. A lot of new sheet metal. Uh, I posted this uh, this metal piece here on social. Had somebody ask why I didn't do it all the way across the firewall. Why just this little section? And that's mainly because this is just for structure. To kind of hold these components. I'm going to put aluminum across the whole thing. So it's going to get one continuous piece of aluminum that's going to be the firewall. A lot of decorative stuff on it. The cowl area will be the same way. All aluminum. May do aluminum top or carbon fiber. The doors themselves uh, will have a lot of aluminum. Where the door panels were will definitely be aluminum. May reskin the outsides of the doors. Not really sure yet. Haven't got that far. I'm not really that concerned with it. I know that when that time comes for that kind of stuff, I will tackle it. Right now, I want to get it rolling. I want to get all the structure stuff done. I want to get all the components that are going to make this thing a working car done so I can get that off my mind. All right, guys. There you go. Lots of parts coming for this thing. Should see a lot of progress here soon. I want to have it at pits. If you're not familiar with pits and you live anywhere on the east coast of the United States or the eastern side of the United States, you need to check out pits. Ponies in the Smokies, uh, it's in uh, Pigeon Forge or just outside Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. If you're anywhere close to that, you need to come. It's in March. Gonna have this thing here. Won't be done, but I'm gonna have it there. Here, I'm gonna have it there. Along with the Grey Goose, gonna take it. So, uh, you want to see it if you want to see this thing in progress it will be at pits into march make plans see you guys there that's all i got for you today i hope you enjoyed that as always thank you for joining me may have another video on this thing this week we'll for sure have a friday video this friday so stay tuned for that all right guys y'all have a good week go do work son